So I guess get right into it, right? Millie, I can't do it. I need oh, you out. For fuck's I need sake. you out. Just do it. You I can't do it. Why? Oh, fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're invading my personal space. What if I turn around? You doesn't feel safe right now. I don't feel safe. Why? You're just trying a safe space. I can't say anything. You I can. can't say you anything. Can't be honest. Why not? Because you're in here. Because so? you're judgmental. We're pals. Yeah, but what if I say something? <laughs> I'm not judgmental. I don't care. Everything I say, I feel like I feel judged by. Everything you say, say, say the worst possible thing now. No, because I have a feeling this is on. <laughs> it's not on yet. I don't believe you. I don't believe. Oh, you. it's not on yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> just say the worst possible thing. I just don't care. Yeah, but that's not the point. I've already heard the robot girlfriend thing. I just don't care. <laughs> if you think that's, that's the, the worst, worst possible, possible thing. thing, it was pretty. Right, nice. you didn't hear the drunk cast. <laughs> Guys, I don't we don't talk about the drunk guys. Guys, I'm turning around. I do not care. Well, that's even weirder. It, it just feels weird. Like it would be it would be less weird if you're actually in the podcast. It talking. would it would be normal. Because you're you're a silent witness to everything. You're just she's a viewer, just a ghost floating around. I'm I'm ready like to to throw the ball. You know, Yo. you're 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 a wall. And yeah, I'm throwing the ball I'll at you and it. it's bouncing. I'm but I feel like the wall back. isn't stable right now. And it's not going to bounce back. It's just going to destroy the wall. I'm, I'm not happy wall. with that. I'm a sturdy wall. Be a sturdy wall. I've please. been cemented brick by brick by some loyal craftsmen, and I am ready. Human I'm just sturdy. walked past. You and I, we talk about a lot of things. Yeah. And we we like we tend to talk about like, I mean we we like to talk about philosophical, you know. We like to pretend. Sometimes we yeah, <laughs> scientific things. We like to pretend that we're having kind of interesting conversations. But we don't really know anything about, you know, what we're talking about, do we? No, no. So what are you expecting to get out of this? I mean... Your newfound new, interest. Newfound interest in philosophy. Yeah. What, what, what are you getting from it? Like, well, why are you interested? Because it's something that everyone wonders, I think. Like, you innately want to know the, the questions that arise, and I like to know how to argue those things, and like how to, to properly go about discussing them. Because I feel like when you're reading up on philosophy and shit, you feel like you're you're brushing up against something, like something that can uh, give you this you know this sensation of like wonder and like it's like it feels what's the it feels like like it adds new meaning to your life. Yeah, like, yeah, and you don't know if on the next page, for example, something might you might read something that will just completely change how you see yeah, everything. Like something that might blow your mind. Yeah. I think that's what that's why we're interested in, in it, and that's what we're trying to get from it. But like, I feel like we're ne- we're not really going to. No one ever does, right? Yeah, because like, I mean, I guess science can blow your mind. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> science has blown that, my mind. Like a slogan. <laughs> science. So, but but science is just observing the world, right? It's just accumu- accumulating knowledge about the Yeah, world. it's like a rational way to view the world. It's just, yeah, it's just deciphering, like, the um, what it, the objective reality or whatever. Yeah. Or we'll trying to decide on it, I suppose. Yeah, testing it. Seeing yeah, what sticks. Seeing what, what, what's And then true. that thing is probably true. But there's only so much you can get from that. Like, you can know everything there is to know about reality, about how the universe works and everything. Mm-hmm. But w- you still don't know what to do. You, you don't know how to act in yeah. the world. Yeah, it's like it doesn't matter how well you understand what a subatomic particle is or what the hell is going on at that level. It doesn't actually what change anything on? you perceive. Don't ask me that. What is going on? There's no way I can yeah. explain that. But it doesn't matter what you perceive because you don't perceive things in atomic subatomic levels. You feel like there's a meaning and you feel like there's stuff going on. So I feel like we you, you can you can know that, but it doesn't change your the way. You sort of live almost. Yeah. I mean, it, it can change your philosophy, but I don't think it can give you a more. Um, it can allow you to have a more informed, you know, decision-making process because you can. You can. Uh, what's the word? You know, you can. Well, I don't know where that sentence was going. <laughs> Just fucking give yeah, up. D- you know what? <laughs> Next. <laughs> Let's move on. You can know stuff, but you don't always understand that stuff. So. Uh, what was the point I was making? I think that what you're trying to get from science and philosophy and all that is actually what most people get from religion. For sure. Like, a sense of meaning. Yeah. A, a sense of direction. 
Because until you get that, you can't really move on onto other things. Like, I feel like it's almost stopping stone. Uh, it's stop, a stopping stone. Yeah, 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 it's a stopping <laughs> stone. It's a stopping stone. It's a stopping stone. You've got to stop at it <laughs> step or whatever. And uh, you can only really progress in other things. Because if you're constantly thinking, why am I doing this thing? Then you're not going to be as productive at that thing as you would if you weren't thinking about that. Yeah. Because you've been, your thoughts would be more directed into how I can improve upon this thing or what I should do in relation to this thing instead of why am I doing this thing. Yeah. Um, and I mean, religion is a nice... It's like a nice bit of fresh air, almost. Like, it pushes you beyond that. You don't have to ask why, because you have... Well, you believe you have a concrete understanding as to why, and you have, a, you have an understanding as to what to do and how to act. And that really takes a load off your mind, because that's quite a lot of what you're doing. Yeah, it, it, it allows you to not have to think about the reasons for anything, you know. Yeah, because God has a plan, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And that's a nice way... As they say, you know, there's only one set of footsteps in the sand, and that's Jesus's, because he's, he's carrying you, man. <laughs> he's carrying you across that. that Wait, thing. who says that? The Christians say that. <laughs> They're just those generals. There's only one set of footprints in the, in the sand. It's like a story. There's two footprints. It's you walking alongside Jesus, but then he carries you at some point. So there's two set of footprints for Until a while. Point, and then there's one, a certain point. because you get tired and Jesus carries you. Is he carrying everyone then? I suppose, yeah, Am on I a one-on-one on one basis. Uh, I guess this is kind of the second part of our discussion that we had last week about nihilism and all, and all that. Where We're at the point where we're like, what's the point? We don't know what to do. Mm. And we need something that adds meaning to our lives. Mm. And I think the reason for that is because we're like... We're animals that have evolved to the point where we're self-aware about everything and we can analyze everything we do and all of our behavior and stuff so we're just like reactionary in a way like we just look at the information and we're like oh i'm feeling hungry right now that's because i have you know a biological you know impulse to, mm, to yeah you know, to feel hunger so i can eat so i can survive you know and we can just analyze everything we do like that but then you just left think i mean people can just because we have free will on a... Well, we're not going to yeah, get into free will. <laughs> At Bailey right now. <laughs> but on like a, an emergent conscious level, we feel like we have free will anyway. Like, whether we not we do yeah. actually have I mean, free there's will something. On a, you know, yeah, there's something there. Like, people decide to go on like hunger strikes and shit just to prove a point or whatever. Like, we can actively go against our, our like biological uh, instincts. Yeah. And that's weird. Like, other animals don't do that. Mostly, I'm guessing. I wonder if that's true, actually. Like, if... I, I feel like maybe if you mistreat animals, they might go on, like, hunger strikes. What the fuck does that mean? What? Like, they'll not eat. Because you can't force an animal to eat, right? Like, if you put food out, there's no... There's no they're not definitely going to eat it. I'm sure they can... Well, if they're hungry... I feel like animals... Most animals don't have that, um, that kind of... Um, that layer of consciousness. Well, you think question... like if you were to mistreat, like let's say there's a dog. And Wait, you... Are you, what do you what are you saying? The, 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 the dog would be like passive aggressive about it, like not passive aggressive. If you're being a dick to me, I'm not going to eat your food. No, but like if it's having such a terrible life, it won't eat the food. If it's hungry, it will. Sure. What you're saying is going to commit I, suicide. I'm saying, I'm saying there's a. I think it is capable of making a choice. I don't know enough about animal. I think maybe but... that could be the case, but I think you know, generally speaking. Animals Typically, are... Typically, they double go for the food. Yeah, they're, they're, they're slaves to their instincts, right? Oh, I don't think they have that, like, meta-consciousness where they question it, and they're like... No, they're not... No, I don't think they'll question yeah. it, but I do wonder if they, they are capable of, like, understanding that they're suffering and how it can end. If they're suffering. Pro probably. Maybe they do, to an extent. But I, I don't know if that's... Just, really. Yeah, I don't think that they have that level of, like, self-analysis. Well, they definitely don't have the level of self-analysis to figure out, like, why it is they're feeling whatever biological impulses they're I don't feeling. Think, yeah, I don't think they think why. I think, actually, I think that's the yeah. difference. Like, the reason we need religion is because, well, when you're an animal, if we compare, like, modern humans to other animals, and animals, like, they kind of have their own religion in a way, but it's a biological one. They just mm -hmm. follow their instincts, right? I mean, it's kind of stupid to call that a religion, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm stupid. That's okay. <laughs> but, like, 
they just follow their, their 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 biological urges without questioning them. But we're because we're so self-aware about all that, we can question them and we can actively go against our nature. But then you're left thinking, okay, so what do I do? Why do I do anything? Yeah. You know, how do I live my life? And most people will be like, well, try to maxim maximize happiness or whatever. Yeah, yeah, well but I feel like that's just like you don't have the balls to kill yourself, so you're just figuring out a way to make life kind of, you know. It's it's a thing livable. that passes the day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like gets you to the next. Whereas one. animals, they don't have to think about that. They just go with whatever instincts you know are controlling them. Right. So instincts are like their gods telling them what to do. They're like internal. I know that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Like, but I, I feel like as you know, humans entered this new realm of consciousness, of self-awareness that we're in now. Yeah. I feel like the brain's way of, like, dealing with that, like, newfound self-awareness was to create new gods, like, create a new thing that would give them a direction to go in. So instead of having the, the internal biological urges, I mean, we still have them, but because we're self-aware of them and we can go against them now, we need something else to give us direction. So they created external fictional gods that tell them what to do i i wouldn't say that's the i would say that's a societal thing not a brain thing like i wonder if you take just a human and sort of separate it from a any... societal thing is a brain thing i i think it would only arise with i guess a group of once somebody suggests it so like once you reach a level of consciousness and everyone's starting to go Right, so why why are we doing this thing, stuff, or how are we doing this stuff? And then somebody will say, like, there's there'll be something unexplainable, inexplainable, uh, like a lightning bolt at a time when you know, obviously we didn't know what lightning bolts were, yeah. and and someone would have just said that's that's this thing. So maybe maybe. But why do you think that that's the way that, that guy's mind chose to rationalize that? Because I think that's just what, like, religion... Well, cause, cause, no, because I feel like it's it's obvious to think... Or not obvious, but it might be it's certainly natural to me to think of initially, like, the world is sort of in your head, almost. What do you mean? Like, like, uh... No. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to go that route. <laughs> well, I don't know what route it was. I just think that... We had, as animals, well, we're animals, but, like, when we weren't at this level of self-awareness, we had that that internal, like, governing system that points us in a direction. And we don't question, we didn't question what, like, we didn't, we weren't looking for meaning. We were just being, we were programmed a certain way, and we were just following, you know, the biological orders. Mm. You know, the instincts. But then when you, let you, when you reach a certain level of self-awareness, you need a new governing system because you're questioning the biological one and it's not working anymore because it's not giving you that meaning. You're not finding, you know, you're just like, okay, so everything's, you know, materialistic, deterministic. What's the point of anything? You know, why do we do, why do I do this instead of this? Why something rather than nothing? Like, why do I do what, what I do? Yeah. So... The way the brain adapted adapted to that, the best thing it could come up with was to create an external, you know, an external governing system that gives meaning to to what we do or gives meaning to things we perceive. But it, well, that's a, a fantastic way to convince a mass of people to have one one mind almost. <laughs> so it would have been a great way to, like, if you were starting off as a tribe or whatever, and you're the chieftain or like the leader of the tribe, it's it's chieftain. Good. That's chieftain. The people is that a word? <laughs> I've certainly said it. Chief? chief. What's a chieftain? A chief. I don't know. Like a chief, I guess. Well, like what's a leader. The tun. For? The tun. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's something in World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'm going on. Okay, that's it. cool. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> carry on. So, like, you you have a leader who who is expected by the people to because they would have gave gave the meaning. Like, you have an alpha. Even in animals, you have an alpha, like an alpha wolf or something. Right? Yeah, yeah. But so I'm saying that maybe if, in... the al- if one of the members of the pack or whatever, the tribe starts saying stuff that doesn't make sense and it just sounds crazy, They'd... he's not going to be accepted as part of the tribe anymore. Right. So 
whether so, you're the, the alpha but, or not. But if you are the alpha, then the people below you are more likely to... Uh, they, they look up to you, like they respect what you say. So yeah. what you say goes, almost. Because you're the leader. So it's like, but why... why, why because, because that person has the most responsibility. Yeah, okay. like that person okay. makes those decisions. But why would the concept... Even if it was the alpha, the leader, whatever, the chieftain, mm. that came up with these stories, you know, the guards and stuff. Yeah. Why... Why were the other people's brains able to accept that as a reality, as a version, an interpretation of reality? There's something about the way our consciousness developed that made it so that that would make sense. Because it's easier. It's easier to dis- to to believe, like to initially just go, yeah, I agree, than it is to question it yourself. And yeah, I think people will always get, well, not always, but I think people like to take the easy route. It's the simpler route. Like, maybe once you're told, you just don't think of it. Or if you do, you think, oh, well, the chieftain must have thought of that, and he's still, he's still a religious person, kind of thing. So you, you, you're, it's almost easier for you to just go along happily with it. So, and in order to survive as a, as a group, like... An individual is more likely to survive in a group, and the group is more likely to survive if they have, like, one goal, if they have one set mind. So if they all act in a particular behaviour, it's going to mean that they can act sort of as one a little easier, like they'll be able to function more as a unit. Yeah. So I, I think it probably stems from that. Like, that's why, sort of... People get religious, <laughs> almost like not maybe not religious, but maybe that's why people won't question the higher ups. Like it's the same, same way in jobs and stuff. Like the boss, what the boss says goes, right? Yeah, like they make the final call. Are you saying it's just they accept it because it's uh, it's a hierarchical structure that seems to I feel like it makes sense. But when you accept something like that, like I mean, you have to like you accept it because you're willing to accept that because you feel like. I don't know, whatever reality that person is presenting is preferable to the alternative. Yeah, well, you, you, I guess you don't, well, first of all, maybe not everybody questions stuff as much as we might. Like, people aren't natural born sceptics, that, that was developed over yeah, time. That's, yeah, that's what So, so scepticism is relatively recent, I think, a, a popular, like, as a popular kind of belief system, well, not belief system, but... You know, way of thinking, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there would have been almost less... Because because I think unity is more prosperous for people. Like, a community is able to grow quicker with a like mindset than if they weren't. Like, if they were all a group of individuals rather than a team. Yes. I think you're more likely to progress as the team than the group well, if of they're, individuals. Well, if they're all, you know... Yeah, if they're all um, in, going in the same direction, they all have the same belief system, then yeah, they're obviously going to uh, be more successful. And then over time, you sort of pass that on to your children. So when your children are born, they're born with the concept of the, the sort of religious belief or the concept that this, what this person says is the right thing or what this person says, uh, like, we should trust and believe. So you're instantly indoctrined into a kind of it's easier for your for you to understand it because everybody does it and like i feel like we're, we're social animals and we we learn a lot of our behaviors from what's going on around us so once it's happened in a society which i feel it almost must for a society to have formed in the first place for a group to get together they have to have like uh minded um like ideas or goals yeah they have and they have to have a common understanding of reality yeah yeah and so I think when children are raised in that kind of environment, they're more likely to accept their beliefs of their parents because I feel like that's innate, like inborn. Like you, you trust your parents. They're the first humans you see. So that's instantly how, oh, that's how women act almost. Like yeah. that's what I look like and they're doing that. So I feel like I should be doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then over time, I guess that gets more and more and, and people understand like the higher ups that are running uh that kind of religion or or whatever it is the belief system they understand that they can raise productivity through certain ways and and that's like you go narrow and narrow like that's how religious deities are almost born like 
god or whatever right. because people like that kind of figure okay. um, yeah. and I feel like that it raise, like the, it must raise productivity in a, as a, on a societal level like if it, people will be more productive if they all believe in the same thing yeah um, sure. and, I, and I think it's true even now like even if you're atheist and stuff or I, I think you still share you still share a common belief like uh, you, you share an understanding that science is better to um, sort of focus your attention on rather than something more fictitious <laughs> something with less sort of uh, rationale or reality. reason yeah, behind it um, and you sort of come to that decision naturally and then you group with other like-minded individuals and and then it gets bigger and bigger I guess because you raise children with those mindsets and they talk to their friends and and then sort of it spreads out like that. Yeah, and the chances of anyone ever questioning it become fewer and fewer because obviously then there's the the, the fact that subconsciously or even consciously we're we're not that willing to go against the mainstream understanding of things. Yeah. Because with that comes like this fear, this fear of being you know sort of ostracized. Ostracized, you know. You have to go with the herd. Mm. Um. Yeah, but just to get back to like the just to get back to the origins of consciousness for a sec, <laughs> like okay, what you just said was true, but why do you think like what was going on in early humans, you know, brains, the the, the idea that these gods were true? No, how, what would your le- your state of consciousness have to be? For you to accept that as a, you know, as a true claim, as a true reality. As like a truth. Yeah, it's, hmm. like, what does that come from? It comes from your brain trying to rationalise things, right? To give explanations to things, to events. Yeah, I, I suppose. And to be, your behaviour as well. Yeah, and I, think, and I think the brain has an easier job if other people are doing it. So once you, once one person starts saying, like, if, if, if a group of people... All, all question and they all sh- exclaim like what what's going on what is what's the point and then yeah. or like who, what's this uh, let's say James James just speaks up he's like Clicking oh that's <laughs> that's Kevin Kevin does that everyone goes Kevin does that and then James you know he explains Kevin a little bit and how Kevin helps him make, dis- make decisions and stuff and people think I, I'd like to get Kevin, yeah, Kevin. and then I, mean, I guess it just it. comes from that like just Kevin Maybe somebody either misnames their their what like their consciousness is in their head, like what they think. They think someone's put it, something's put it there, or there's a reason for it. And the second you think there's a reason for why you're existing, you have to think why the reason is. And I think the log, the most logical explanation is something almost in our image because that's all we know. Hmm. Like we, as if you look around, we appear to be the most intelligent like species yeah and so i think from there you can make the leap that like there has to be a more like a bigger smarter species because i i think the old kind of old gods are all um not always but it's common to have many right it's not like one god yeah that's quite a not a recent thing but it's more recent in like well, because, yeah, because they used to attribute gods to every different thing. Like, yeah. you know, it was the sun god or whatever, the god of fucking war, or, you know, various things like that. And I think people maybe don't live long enough to work out that that's not the case. So, because their scope of knowledge is so, is a lot smaller than ours, like, they can't just go on the internet and Google, why is this thing? They, every, you, you like to come up, like... It feels nice to live in a world that has set rules and things. So when there's a famine or when there's uh, like a bountiful harvest and and you've prayed beforehand, if and, and then that occurs, you, you, you associate that with the praying. Although yeah. that didn't actually correlate you, to you, as the way you perceive it, it would, because you've prayed, now there's a bountiful harvest. Thus, therefore, the praying made the bountiful harvest. Yeah. So, and I think that's a lot easier to do and a, a lot more natural to do. And also, like, if there's a famine or whatever, any kind of, like, natural disaster, the idea that it was caused by a god and that there's a reason for it, that, you know, 
gives you some consolation, like it makes mm. you feel better about things. Yeah. And it's a way of like, you know, uh, well, it's a way of giving meaning to everything that happens. Mm. And that's helpful for you on a psychological level because religious people compared to, you know, idiot freak, nihilistic freaks like us, the difference is that, you know, we don't have that. That the existential safety net. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of words. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. great. That's a good word. Nice. Um, yeah, we don't have that level. We don't have that layer of meaning that's, you know, added to everything that happens in your life. Mm. And I think like, that's what r- religion, you know, at its best can do. Yeah, it's super comforting. But the problem arises when that layer of meaning contradicts the the objective layer of reality, you know. Right, which is what we're we're, we're sort of seeing now, (laughs) almost. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem is what religions are most of the time, and what they are at at the moment, the big religions, like Christianity, you know, Islam and stuff, Mm. the problem is that they're not, they're the bad type of religion, you know, they're the, the literal religion yeah the fundamental fundamentalist interpretation of religion in the sense that it's it's not religion it's more a kind of it's like a it's like a sci-fi premise you're living in this world where there's this you know superior being that's watching over everything right. where you have it's like a he's like a metaphysical dictator you know he 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 controls everything, and like if you if you do good, then you go to heaven. If you do bad, yeah. you go to hell. Like that's, yeah, it's like a sci-fi horror premise. You know, it's 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 terrifying. And the main reason people do good is because they're scared that they're going to go to hell. Right. Surely that's not a good thing. That's yeah. dishonest. It's not authentic behavior. Well, you'd think that a person that is only doing good things because of the fact that they're afraid that they'll go to hell or feel like get get some shit given to them by their sort of creator i'd argue that that isn't as good of a person who does those virtuous acts naturally yeah. like kind of good stuff net like on their own sort of back without without the kind of push from from a sort of violent being almost like yeah cuz is one is them naturally doing it and the other one is them being backed into a corner so they have to do it yeah Um, through their own kind of belief, but still, uh, the end is the same, like, the result is the same, in that there's good behaviour, or, you know, something nice has happened, but the kind of, the means is a little different, and I, I feel like that matters a little bit, like, yeah, I mean, to some extent. The point of religion, to me, is to, like, I don't know, I think that Jordan Peterson said this, or maybe I made this up, I don't know, (laughs) you know? Okay. It's either Peterson or me, you know, one of those two. Um, he said something like two big players, <laughs> two intellectual giants. Um, the point of religion is to point you in the direction of what is the most meaningful. It's like it gives it 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 tells you how to act in the world and what to do. Because if you stay at the nihilistic in the nihilistic realm of like just seeing things as as what they really are, you know, the naturalistic materialistic, deterministic world mm. where there's no point to anything it's just things are happening yeah, the way they are yeah, it's all random they're, like, well, they're, yeah, they're following the laws of physics yeah, and that's yeah. all And but on this emergent conscious level we need to, we need to find meaning to do things because we have this conscious we're conscious experiences of, of things and we feel like we need something to drive us and religion can give you that, that drive yeah. it's like a guide you know, it tells you what to do and it can make everything that happens in your life, you know, a million times more meaningful. Yeah, I, I think, to be honest, you could be certainly a lot happier, maybe more emotional to an extent. Because if things mean more, then they affect you more. So, and, and I think overall, you, you might be happier at believing in a god. You, you certainly would have, uh, I, I assume, you'd have less uh, sort of existential crises. Yeah. Or kind of like... You, you don't... Well, you, you, you're done. You're basically, at that point, you're done thinking, what's the point in this thing? It's like, well, God fucking got it, man. God's totally... <laughs> God's he's sorted. He's got a plan for me. He's got a plan for you. Yeah. You just have to go with it. And that means that you can do whatever it is you're going to do or whatever it is you want to do because 
that was always intended by the G-Man. The big old, yeah. big old boy in the sky. Yeah, big, old, big, old, big old daddy. <laughs> yeah, but I think the point is to find something that's not, you know, a literal interpretation of religion that makes you feel like you're living in, like I said, a, what did I say, a metaphysical dictatorship or whatever. Right. You have to find a way of seeing things that... Well, you have to find a religion that makes you see things just in, in a more meaningful way, where everything has meaning, but it doesn't... It's not... You know, it's still true. Like, it's not false meaning. Yeah, so it's, it, so I guess you want a religion that's it's based in, I guess, our current understanding of physics, or, I mean, ideally, beyond our understanding of it. Like, it's... Be, but I guess it has to be, st- like, in reality, in some, in some I mean, way. And then also gives you sort yeah. of reason or like, are I you guess, looking for some sort of like know. school of ethics I, I guess know. I guess this like is a, just a Peterson view, a what to do or it's just like it's just seeing all the layers of meaning that every one of our actions have and everything that have, like for example let's find an example let's you know let's stall for a few seconds let's to take a you, stroll so I can think of a let's f- take a example. stroll in the gardens of examples yeah and, oh, there's a great tree. Oh, and you pluck the fruit. these delicious analogies that are growing <laughs> on this tree. Okay, so let's compare your life, your sad, depressed, you know, pitiful existence. Oh, okay, you know. To, <laughs> to a religious <laughs> Talk person. Talk yourself. <laughs> you know, you don't put words in my mouth. Imagine you... You know what? I could even add an animal to this, to, to show what I was trying to show earlier, with the different levels of consciousness. So you have an animal, you have a religious person, and you have you, uh, a quote-unquote opti- optimistic nihilist, or whatever the <laughs> fuck that means. Okay, so imagine all of you have a bad day. Mm. The animal had a, has a bad day. Let's say it's uh, a fucking lion, because that's the only animal I could think of. Has a bad day. Maybe well, it's a lioness, and she couldn't. the lioness couldn't hunt anything. She couldn't catch anything. Maybe she... she sprained her ankle or something. She had a bad day. Mm. Bad day. Now, the lion doesn't reflect on that and think, oh, I had a bad day. The lion's not necessarily going to be sad about it and be thinking, oh, what's the point? Why am I doing this? No. It's just following its instincts. Okay, I need to eat. Okay? Yeah. I didn't succeed today. I'll get some food tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm just, you know, I'll just, do, I'll just do something. I won't put too much pressure on this leg because it hurts or whatever. You're just going with the flow, with the biological instinctual flow. The religious person has a bad day. Maybe, uh, you know, they missed their bus, they, they were late to work or whatever, they, they spilled their coffee or something. They had a bad day. Religious person has an explanation for things. Mm. It has something that tells, tells them how to interpret everything that happens to them in their life. It, it's meaningful. Maybe it's, uh, oh, well, uh, you know, the universe is just testing me or something. You know? It's making me str- it's grow stronger as a God person. Or, or, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, God's just testing me. You, you, you see yourself as, like, this is what the story of Job is in the Bible, you know. He has a shitty life, but it's like, you know, you have to, you have, you, you have to keep your faith despite yeah. everything shitty that happens to you. you, know, and, you and you can stay, you can still be a strong person even if shitty things happen to you, because you always find find the bright side of it, I guess. And now you, you're like, shit, I had a shitty day, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to have loads more shitty days. What's the point? You know, why do I accept this, you know? All I can do is try to reduce the chances of having a shitty day in the future, but, you know, it just but, makes you sad. No. There's no... There's no... There's not a, a, a different layer to the sad... Is, to the events, you know? It's just... The physical, materialistic, determ- deterministic reality of those events. Oh, that happens. But it's only sad if you perceive it as sad. Like, I, th- it's only a bad day because you've said it's a bad day in that in in this scenario. Wait, it made you feel bad. It made you feel sad or whatever. Okay, but it made you feel sad, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Just being sad about something doesn't inherently make it like just not being happy. Well, however you define mean- bad, I mean, if it made you feel bad, you know. That's, I mean, you can feel that's how you're going to interpret yeah. the day. It was a bad day. Like, I guess what I'm saying is the non-religious person is reactionary in the sense that they can just look at what's happened and see this is what happened. You could try to figure out why this happened using, you know, scientific the scientific method and mm. analyze things. Okay, this is what happened. 
but there's nothing there's there's nothing else there's you don't know what to do with that you don't know how to act you just know how to react to things how to observe and analyze things and be aware of things yeah. the, the, i mean the 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 animal doesn't have the reaction it just has the action it just acts according to its instincts okay the religious person is kind of what bridges the two the re- you can come in. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I mean, I was in the middle of a point. I but... know, I could teach you about really important shit, and I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm sorry, guys. Fucking bitch. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so the, well, uh, the religious person has the reactionary side of things, where it's like, oh, shit, that was bad. Like, that made me feel sad. But then it has also the action. It has something, a governing system, that tells it how to act. So in the world where bad things can happen. In this scenario, you're you're substituting religion for ethics, or not ethics, but a way to act. Yeah, ethics, basically. Yeah. It's so it's, it's not in, innately a belief in a sort of a deity, even like well, any school of ethics that you follow, be it that you want. It can be, but it just because because you're only gonna <laughs> just doesn't have to be in a literal sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then in that case, I guess you want to be... It Wouldn't that imply that everybody is religious? Because I don't think there's anyone that doesn't follow a well, certain I mean, school of ethics, be it their own or yeah, an already I mean, that's, stated that's what That's the point that Jordan Peterson was making. That, that we're all religious in a sense. Because we're... I mean, I don't know if I agree with that, but like, I guess it just depends how you define religion. Yeah, well, but obviously, I guess... I don't know. We all have... These axiomatic beliefs. Or, yeah, we have an axiomatic foundation for our beliefs that that tells us how to act. You know, we can think that we're completely sceptical beings, but we're not well, really, because we're still yeah. doing things. Right, yeah. We're, we still have, like, a value measuring system if, that if you tells didn't, us... Yeah, if you didn't have a value, value measuring system, there's no way you would do anything. Because right. Because you'd constantly be going... Well, this could I could do this thing. Either way, it doesn't do matter. Thing. Like, yeah, oh, you, have, yeah. you have to have something that tells you that one thing is more valuable than the other. One decision is more, yeah, you know, right. Because then you do that, but and then you make another decision, and you do that. Don't and... also animals do have that? Because animals certainly do things. But what I'm saying is, animals don't have the level of self awareness that they analyze it. It's an instinctual thing. So like, you don't think there's a way that they don't need to think about what's more important, you know. They don't ha- need to have that decision-making process where they're like, you know, what should I do this or that? It's just, what's going to get me to my, to the end, you know? What's, how am I going to get to the, the goal that, the, 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 my, the, my instincts are telling me to get to? Right. You know? There what's the fastest way to get the food? What's the fastest way to get this, you know? You, you don't think that it's capable of humans, like, to live that way? It's just going down the, 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 the what's the word, the, um... The path of least resistance, or whatever. Like it's right. just you know, getting to you what you need to do. Do to whatever survive. it is. Yeah. Okay. Whereas we have, the, like I said, like the reactionary aspect where we're just looking, we're observing things and thinking about them and questioning them. Yeah. But you can't just stay in that zone of just questioning things. You need a value system. You need a voice. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> like you need something to guide you, to push you in a certain direction, of the most meaningful thing to do. Do you? Dude, I'm trying to make a case for religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but be that as it may. Which, sure. which do you prefer? An entire life of just questioning everything that happens to you and, 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 uh, uh, and concluding that there's no point to anything? Or a life of seeing everything that happens to you and finding meaning in everything? Neither. Do you, okay, want be, do you want to be the animal? On this one? Yeah, I want to be the animal. No, the middle. The I don't know. Like, why is it? That, why is it that you think that, that, that there has to be a value system? I'm not or, saying there has or, to be. Well, why do you think that? I'm just saying, surely living the most meaningful life is better than living, you know, the least meaningful. But life. But why? Because we're driven <laughs> to meaning. Like, we're instinctually tr- we 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 map meaning onto things. That's how people invented religion in the first place. They rationalise things by giving them meaning that they didn't have. That's what we do. And that's but what we're struggling that with. That, that, that because we're not sceptical. Mean it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. 
I'm saying it's the thing that we try to do as humans. Well, yeah, we like to rationalize. We're we in make, search. We of, like to make things make sense. Yes, we're constantly in search of meaning, right? Mm-hmm. That's why we're we're depressed sometimes because we we look at things and we see the materialistic deterministic reality of things and we don't see any meaning in that. We just see fucking particles, you know. And why does that make you feel depressed? It makes you feel depressed because there's no, you know, transcendent meaning to that. It's just what it is. And you don't know what to do with that information. But that has to... Re- but, sh- but believing in a religion doesn't necessarily mean that that won't, that will go away, uh, that won't go away. Because you still have that. Like, uh, I guess maybe for this example, it's, it's of a religion like, God, like Christianity, yeah. where you have like a deity, like one specific... Or I guess God is three because whatever, but you know the Holy yeah, Spirit and whatever. And um, you lose. <laughs> I've totally forgot my point. Ah, <laughs> oh, what was I saying? You were saying. That, I was saying that you know, religion gives everything meaning, whereas if you live without religion, you don't have the meaning. You were saying that I don't know. You you just started your sentence. I don't know what you're saying. Christianity. Oh, fuck. I was given an example on something. Something. You, do you need to go go back to the, the example tree? You can, we go back, example. can we go back to the example tree and <laughs> pluck a new fruit? Um, fuck. I'm going to pee. I'm going to oh, pee. Shit, man. And then I'll decide whatever it was we were talking about. This is Mercedes. when I tried to draw the peace sign and I thought, shit, that's a car sign. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why the peace sign? Ah, uh, you were questioning something. You, I think uh, there was something about, like, peace. There was, there was something about religion. You, you're bashing religion again. We're not bashing religion. I don't know. I, Liam is being the fucking dick to religion. Liam's totally all the dick to religion. I'm, you're I'm, the good guy. I'm, I'm good. the good guy, you you're can the say good one. it. You're the good guy. I've actually, I've got it. You found it? I actually remembered it. You got the, that fruit. Yeah, yeah. Graphic. Before we start talking about fruit, let me just okay, get it out. Shut the fuck up. He's got it. <laughs> it's a big juicy it. fruit. Um, Bite into it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's got it. <laughs> <laughs> dropped it. Happened. Um, it was about... Right, so religious people, if they have a specific, like, a uh, particular deity, I don't know if it would apply to other religions, but... There will come a time where life just seems so fucking shit. Like, Why? Because it does. Life sometimes does that. You, and you just think, fuck, yeah, what the I, fuck? I and just th- said the religion... No, 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 no. Dude. Okay, go on. Dude. Go on. Okay. And then, so you, you start questioning, and, and that initiates the questioning. Like, if, so if you believe in a god, and, and you believe that this god is always making the right decision, and he has a plan for you. And then all of a sudden, your life just goes to shit. Like, your dad gets cancer, and, and your sister, she's in a car accident. And, and you've, I don't know, you've just developed another disease. And everything, everything looks terrible yeah. for you. You'll start, that's when you'll start questioning, hang on. Yes. What is this god character? What, no, no, no. Do I have a... Yeah, but you're, you're attacking, you know, that type of religion. Right, that's what, what I'm saying. I would I'm... call the bad religion. Okay. Because it, it creates this this fake, you know, sci-fi premise of, you know, the gods. But the... You know, and then when you encounter something bad like that and you say, well, why would God do... You yeah, you, you, you then have to go back. That's when you start questioning everything. Yes, because right? that's when the... And, layer... and then you'll have a bigger drop, the, But I that's think. when the religion is contradicting the objective reality. Because it's made... That type of religion makes you believe that, uh, like... Things like the God, well, I don't know what what were you, what are you saying. So I, I'm saying that you, in doing that, you're going to you're going to question latest... why bad things happen. No, no, no. You're going to reach a later stage in your life where you're uh, less capable of accepting ulterior beliefs because you've come so far on your own and you've spent so much time believing the thing that you do. And then when that seems contradictory to 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 reason or to to how you're mapping the world, like the, how the world seems to be mapped you're going to have a bigger fall, like, it's going to cause you to... Because then you'll have to go... You'll get knocked off the, like, the religion, you'll, you'll go to that kind of state where you're questioning everything, what's yes. the point and stuff. And then... So that's why I think it's important to do that earlier rather than later, when yes. you have the... But that's because your religion is failing you. Right. But it's not providing you with the meaning you need. And that is the bad religion. 
Yes, but I don't. I don't agree with your definition of religion. I don't. What think is the... your definition of religion? <laughs> is it just something that makes you believe false things? I guess it is. A, it's ultimately it is a belief system. So it could be, like. Okay. Any school of ethics. Everything. If, if it's a belief system. Yes. Then everything you believe. Okay. So you do things. You you've chosen to do something rather than nothing. Mm. You make decisions on what to do in your life. You have some kind of belief system, some kind yeah. of ethical you know way of managing all your decisions in your life, and deciding which you know which choice to make. So you have that governing system inside yourself. Yes. Okay. That's kind of a belief system, you could say. <laughs> One could. One could say. I are mean... You, are you sad sometimes? Are you depressed sometimes? For sure. You know? Then something's not working. Something's failing you, Lee. I don't... Uh, I don't know if I... You need to live your life in a way and perceive the world in a way that makes everything meaningful. No. Okay. <laughs> Just go on being sad then, you know? Well, it, that's if you're striving for total well-being, but I... No, for total meaning. Total... But you, you, you can, have, you can still feel sad with meaning, right? Like, you can still be depressed with yes, meaning. Yes, you can still feel the emotion of sadness, but you can interp interpret it in a way that feels meaningful. Okay. I don't really understand what you mean, I don't think. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, man? <laughs> I'm just not getting any meaning from that one, <laughs> you know? I mean, meaning makes things meaningful. Right. When you see everything as meaningful, I would say you're happier. Because, I mean, in contrast to the to the, the nihilistic, you know, worldview where nothing has any inherent meaning, and therefore you, you know, you're just living in a world where, oh, okay, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> You know, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> where am I going with this? But, like I said earlier, I just don't have the balls to kill myself, so I might as well just, you know, yeah, try, to do, on. try to do what makes me happy, I guess. But you don't have that thing that pushes you in the direction yeah. of what's most meaningful. What, what will make your life the best. You know, you don't have that guide. Right. So, Bailey. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, we'll go quick on that, then I'll I'll get onto my fucking Pepe round. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so, why drinking fizzy drinks is like why? Sorry, Bailey. Why is drinking fizzy drinks actually a strange form of masochism that creates a pain pleasure association in young children that they carry with them into adulthood? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we can all agree that fizzy drinks, right? Carbonated drinks. It, it's painful. Yeah, there's bubbles, and you're like, oh, it's gassy. <laughs> it's like, when I, okay, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't like fizzy drinks. Me too, man. I didn't understand why people liked them. I was like, this is hurting my mouth, why would I drink this? Yeah. I could just drink the non-carbonated version of this. Yeah, it's like, people drink Fanta, and you're like, just drink orange. Just drink orange. <laughs> it's literally, just right there, it's just good. It's <laughs> better than the drink you're drinking. Dude, <laughs> when we would go to McDonald's, it was a family outing, I guess. Yeah. My mum would ask for... For like, um, like non fizzy Fanta for me, like soft, like how I don't know. But we <laughs> can you just take out. Can you just take out the bubbles, man? Can you just get this gas? I don't right know what they gave the gamers. Was it just orange juice? Like watered, watered down Fanta or something. Flat Fanta. That's yeah. what we always got. Fanta has been left out for a while. <laughs> so fizziness. I always got fruit shit. <laughs> you want uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's a good choice. Thanks. But I guess I just like Fanta. The taste of it without the fucking. Pain, you know. I guess it has some... <laughs> I get you. I actually thinking about it now. You know, <laughs> you're get getting it. it. <laughs> yeah. You're getting it. Yeah. Okay. To me, fizzy drinks are the spicy foods of drinks. Like spicy foods, they hurt your mouth, right? Yeah, but they're delicious. But they okay. Yeah, you can argue that they. Have, I will happily. That that adds taste to it. It's a different taste. Yeah. Fizziness doesn't add a taste. Okay. It just adds pain, right? Yeah. It just adds that sens sensation of whatever it is, just bubbles popping on your tongue, whatever whatever it is. Yeah. So, why do people drink them? Is my question. And I think I think if we dig deep enough, I... we'll realise. Because I've thought about it. 
I've thought about it. Before. Have you thought about it? No, no, no. As a kid, obviously, I yes. thought about it. Because you have, like, school... I don't know if you did, but I had, like, school parties and stuff, like, when the year would end and... and yeah. You'd, you'd, all the kids, they're... They all they all get like a plastic cup and they they all fill it with fizzy drinks and oh, and, okay. and me and an elite, an elite few yes like, a couple we the intellectuals we'd, yeah, yeah yeah we'd be like we don't like it let's just have orange juice kind of thing like and we we'd look around the room and we think well why and you know what people always trying to make you, they always try to make you feel down for wanting to op- you try to opt out of the uh, the, the carbonated path you there's like oh I'll drink a coke like, I don't really like it. Oh, you don't like coke? Everybody likes That's the coke. herd mentality. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just thinking, have you, dr- have you drank coke? Have you, have you actually had some of this? It's pretty. Oh, you like getting punched in the mouth. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Let's be honest. And my point, I guess, is that it plays into a, you know, masochistic kind of desire. For the- I don't know if it creates it, or if it just plays into an already kind of innate desire for that or something. But there's definitely some kind of pain pleasure association going on there right it's like you like the taste but then you also get uh, uh you know the sensation of getting stabbed in the in the mouth with a knife yeah i wonder if it's a similar thing to when kids drink alcohol like they see their parents do it and then they drink alcohol and they're like Ugh, it's horrible like if you ask a lot of people even now if they like wine or beer or whatever <laughs> initially or yeah, typically people will say yeah it's disgusting and yet a lot of people drink it. Same with coffee and stuff. Maybe it's just a part, like a a lie everybody feeds into. And then once you're in, you can't get out. Like, once you have... You're saying it's just that you... It's just... like a strong flavour or it's a strong thing. And once you've done it, going back to the normal, the one without the punch, it's like, <laughs> why would I ever drink so orange? You're saying it's like, the, it's like the hipster thing with like wine tasting and stuff. It's that, it's that same area where it's like, you're just... You just be want you just want to be part of that group. Of yeah, I guess you can... see maybe you see someone do it, so you think it's cool to do. So then you try and do it. Yeah, and everyone drinks it. Um, I mean that I that I assume is how like alcohol drinking gets passed up. That and the but at least alcohol like in exchange for that disgusting taste of alcohol, you get to be drunk. And then for the exchange of the that kind of gaseous, yeah, you get that sugar rush. Yeah, but the aren't sugar's already sugared? there. But aren't they more sugared? It's just carbonated. I feel like they've got additional sugar in there. I mean, maybe, but I it's not due to the bubbles. No, not due to the bubbles. You could it's have a flat. You could have a flat drink. But but you, as a child, as a fucking baby child, you don't know how the bubbles have got into the drink. But you know that the drinks with bubbles are sweeter. Or is it? I don't know if that's true, man. You don't know. If that's I'm going to have to question you on that <laughs> okay, one. Okay. Okay. Is it just a novelty? That just became so huge. Like a fad that yeah. just took off. You know those, those like, candy bars or whatever? Like, the things that create those, like... The popping candy. The popping things, yeah. <laughs> the, the popping candy. The popping candy. Is that what they're called? They're called popping candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them. Some of them. Cause the ones that pop. This is the type of candy. It's called popping candy. Yeah, I Pop-in, believe so, yeah. Popping, whatever. Like, that's like, ha, it's popping in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what? But that's... <laughs> you know... It's right. like, what the fuck? Am I dying? I remember the first time I ate one of those. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> How do I make it stop? Am I having a seizure? What's going on? And it's the same with fizzy drinks. It's like, what? <laughs> you know? Well, maybe some... Maybe, right, maybe. It's popping drinks. Maybe maybe it's just... <laughs> it's just us that don't like it. <laughs> no, no, maybe no. some... Maybe there is one that does like it. Or you say... No, no, no. Und- undoubtedly. On the, grand, on the grand scheme of things. Everyone's in denial about the fact <laughs> that people just like to feel pain. <laughs> you know? They have trucks and they can't. <laughs> yeah, do it? <laughs> I don't know. No, but seriously though, like, what does that say about humanity? We're fucked up. We don't know what we like. Or just West, Western culture, I don't know. Like, that we... Don't worry, they, they drink... We don't want... <laughs> drink fizzy drinks. We can't accept to. a simple, delicious drink. Mm. We need a drink with more meaning, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's just negative meaning. It's just, we want a drink that makes us feel bad at first. Sometimes bad is better than nothing. You know, it's a change. You know what? Talking about people being wrong about everything, <laughs> everyone being wrong about things. Let's go on to fucking Pepe, yeah, man. So great, so great, <laughs> dude. I'm so I'm like legit angry about this. They've taken him. 
<laughs> they've taken like, him and they've ruined him. That's a good way of putting it, you know. They've taken him. Because this was... Hey, hey, be quiet! <laughs> hey, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on you! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Okay, a bit of context here. Last week really we released a podcast that had as a thumbnail Pepe. Pepe. Because mm-hmm. Pepe Go on. No 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 you carry on because my point is gonna be even more relevant in about five minutes. In about five minutes. <laughs> Pepe is a sad it's a meme that conveys sadness. Yeah. Right? Sad frog. Relatable yeah. frog. Relatable sad frog. <laughs> we were talking about nihilism, you know, oh sad, everything what's the point? Sad. So I put fucking Pepe as the fucking Thumbnail as a video because yeah. I thought it was representative of what we were talking about, and then this little fucking piece of shit. At this, at the point that you did that, I had forgot. I had forgot Pepe had been taken. Yeah, me too. I, I had didn't completely even completely you forgot. On this. I didn't tell you this was going to be the thumbnail because I didn't even think it would be problematic in any way. Pepe's a great dude. Pepe is fucking one of the classic. He's one people. of the greats. He's one of the greats. <laughs> now, okay, so. As always, I posted... As always. I've only done it one, one time before, but I posted the podcast on Reddit. Now, seeing the thumbnail, someone commented, you lost me at Pepe. Now, this really... What's the word? What's the what's the saying? This really... Grind my gears? It really grinded my fucking gears, man. So I said, don't be prejudiced, you know? Mm. Because, you know, don't judge it before. Yeah, you know, it's you know, an open you know, symbol. You don't know what it's whatever. about. Don't judge it just based on the image. And they said something like, you chose a symbol of prejudice. I was like, in what way? You know, I was taking the kind of calm, intellectual <laughs> yeah. approach. Like, okay, <laughs> you want to get into this? Okay, in what way? And they were like, didn't you know? Didn't you know that Pepe is, a, you know, a symbol of the alt-right? And then this fucking dude... I fucking laid don't, into this fucking dude. I, I can't acknowledge the fucking. <laughs> you're, you're about. You're, you're, you're gonna learn yeah. why. <laughs> I, <laughs> shit. I will destroy you too. <laughs> if you're part of the problem. Oh boy. I'm gonna stand, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna stand up for this one. <laughs> Fuck, man. Because I'm getting so angry right now. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what I said, but it, it, was, it was something like okay. You know what? Fuck what I said. I, I've got a new analogy. If you're, if you're a country, right? Imagine you're a country, okay. and you're at war with a neighbouring country, right? And this neighbouring country starts to invade uh, a northern region of your country, right? Mm. What do you do? A. Let the the the, the, the neighbouring country take control of that region of your country, mm-hmm. and just say. You can't go into that region, because if you go into that region, that means you're betraying our country and you're with them. Yeah. So you just let them have that region. Or B, you fight the fucking neighbouring country, and you destroy them, and you get rid of them. Mm-hmm. And you, you force them out of that region. What do you do? Well, you if you're not a retard, you do B. <laughs> you do B. Okay? You don't give them the region. Why would you do that? I Because you... I'd even say <laughs> the, the person has committed like they've they've looked at they've looked at this a minuscule a minuscule amount of the country has been invaded, and they've looked on upon the whole country and gone oh that belongs to the invaders, and that's that's what the person the, the, the conversation is doing. If you give them what they take, you're allowing them to have power over you. You're giving them control of something that wasn't theirs in the first place. I wouldn't... Okay, if they created the symbol, if they created Pepe, Mm. I could understand that argument, right? But if something is a meme, it's just a part of popular culture, Mm -hmm. and a certain group just appropriates that, that meme, that symbol, why would you then make it so that people don't feel like they're allowed to use that symbol unless they're part of that group? What you're doing by doing that is you're giving power to that group and saying that you won. You know, yeah. you get that. You get that symbol now. Whereas if we continue to continue to use the symbol as we used to, and we just ignore them or say, you know what, fuck you. You don't get that symbol. I like that symbol. I like that fucking Pepe. Mm. I like that fucking frog. You know, and you keep it. And then people are like, oh, it's Pepe. You know, when they Pepe. see Pepe, they're not thinking, oh, that's the alt right. They're thinking. 
That's just a meme that's been around for years. They might think, oh yeah, remember that time that those fucking racist people tried to take that meme? Ha! Huh, fuck them, right? <laughs> fuck you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> just about to get... You know the person making these comments? Oh, fuck! <laughs> it may as well have been Millie. Very, Same very much could have been. That was sat at the dinner table. Oh Why have you used Pepe as a oh. thumbnail? Isn't that... Uh, you know? <laughs> fuck you in the old right. Yeah, fuck you. My point is... and. It, w- the way I responded, responded in the Reddit comment is I made the comparison to uh, the fucking swastika and how, you know, the Nazis appropriated that symbol they totally from, took it. from the Hindus. and, and uh, it, was a, it had a pretty good meaning. It was a religious symbol, okay, and they took it. Now, if I go to uh, whatever region of Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia or whatever and I see someone sporting a good-looking a good swastika... Mm. They're, they're pretty common in, in Japan. They're... they're they're like a lot of shrines. There you go. What am I going to do? Am I going to say we should get rid of all these shrines, all of these symbols, because mm-hmm. over there a certain group that we don't like appropriate that symbol? No, you don't get rid of them. You get rid of the hateful people. You mm-hmm. get rid of the bad people. Okay. You don't let them poison popular culture. Okay. Mm. And if you do, you're as bad as them. You know what? <laughs> Merely, you're as bad as the alt right. You're calling me a Nazi. Because, no, 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 you're making leaps, no, no, leaps no, no. and bounds. I'm not over calling there. you a Nazi. I'm calling you a member of the alt right. I'm saying that you're intentionally, voluntarily giving them power. Well, I sure I'm glad I listened to this podcast and learned not to. You're welcome, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're just given to the people. I need to be a bitch about it. Okay. <laughs> hey. Can we play a song for Pepe? Can we play him out? Is there a... <laughs> the Requiem. Pepe Requiem. <laughs>